Math Genie. In this video, I'll be explaining how to solve permutation problems with restrictions. In my last two videos, I talked about how to solve basic permutation problems and how to solve permutation problems with letter arrangement. However, in this video, I'll be showing you more complex and more difficult problems that students more likely miss on competition day. So let's look at the question. And how many of the arrangements of the letters in the word example are the letters A and M adjacent to each other? So you might first think when you first look at the problem that this is the same problem that we just learned how to solve in the letter arrangement video. However, it's a little bit different because of the second part of the question. So, so letter A and M have to be adjacent to each other. Letter A and M have to be adjacent to each other. And what does this mean? This means that letter A and M have to be side by side each other in the letter combinations or words that we create. Another big tip here, the word adjacent is just like a fancy word for the word side by side. Uh, math competitions will usually give you the word adjacent, not the word side by side. So it's very important for you to know these terminologies also. So letters A and M are adjacent. And this just basically means that in the words that we create in our um, combinations, we're going to either see A and M side by side like this. Or we're going to see M, A, like this. But either ways, they're basically side by side, right? So this is like the biggest restrictions that we have, right? So we can't just go ahead and just create, um, just do seven factorial and solve this problem because letters A and M have to be side by side. That's one restrictions that we have. So let me give you the biggest shortcut slash biggest tip for this video. And that is basically saying and basically grouping letters A and M into one single symbol or one single variable. But I'll be using a symbol in this case because it's letters and it's easier for you to get mixed up with different variables. So what you're going to be doing for any type of problems that require you to arrange things and there's a restriction, you always have to group these two as one thing. So for example, in the word example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group A and M into one symbol. And I'm just going to do that as a star so that I will not get mixed up with other letters, right? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to represent letters A and M as one thing. So they will never get separated, right? Because that's the biggest point. They have to be adjacent. So I just made them adjacent by combining them into one thing so they'll never get separated. So after doing this, we basically use the same basic permutation formula that we learned in the first video. And that is basically, since there are six letters to choose from, and what, how many letter word? We're making a six letter word. So that's basically this, right? The formula, the formula that we learned in the first video. And this can be expressed as 6 factorial. What is 6 factorial? If you forgot already, it's basically multiplying all the numbers from 6 all the way until 1. And that will give you 720. And also another big tip here, it's really um, convenient, it will be convenient for you if you just go ahead and memorize some of the factorials that up to maybe 10 so that you won't waste your time trying to multiply these numbers at competitions. So you get 720. A lot of students, again, mistake stop here. However, there is so much more to this question. That's why I chose this question because it's such a good question to use as an example. So a lot of students just say, hey, I got 720 and they'll just write down the answer, right? And move on. Well, that's not the case in this question because remember in my last video, I talked about if there are two same letters like this, you have to always multiply by two factorial. Why? Because E sub 1 x a m p l e sub 2 is the same thing as e 
sub 2 acts a m p l e. So you always, always, always have to divide because these two are basically the same stuff. And however, when we solve these problems, they're counting as two, right? They're counting these two, two different things, but they're actually not, right? So what we have to do to 720 is we have to divide 720 by 2 factorial. For example, if there's three E's in the word, we have to divide by 3 factorial. So what will this give you? This will basically give you 3 60. Students get to this step and step. However, they're not done. Why? Last, last, last thing that we have to do. And that is to realize that A and M and M and A are two different ways that they can stay adjacent, right? A and M are still adjacent. M and A are still adjacent. However, what do we do? We're only doing the A and M thing. We're only doing the A and M. In the question that we just solved, we just did A and M. And since we have to also consider the permutation within the letters, we have to multiply by 2 factorial once more. Why? Because 360 is only talking about the combination we can have where the letter arrangements are in the order A and M. However, we can also have where everything is the same except that we have M in front of A, right? However, they're still the same thing. They're not the same thing, but they still represent that letters A and M are adjacent to each other, right? So basically, we have to multiply by 2 factorial again, bringing us back to 720. So 720 was the answer to this question. However, it's always, 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 always important for you to go ahead and go through all of these steps, check if there is any repeating letters, check if there's different combinations that can happen within the um, letters that we were assigned that were adjacent. And always, always remember to check if however how many numbers there are. So don't always put two factorial. If there's like four repeating E's in the question, you have to do four factorials, right? So always remember to keep all of these steps in mind because these are going to be the steps that you can easily miss out and easily miss a very easy question on math competition day. So our final answer is going to be 720 arrangements, right? So that is going to be the answer to the question. I know this can seem very daunting and very confusing at first. So if you have any more questions about this, be sure to comment down below and I will get to you and I will be really, really more than glad to explain this step further so that I can help you guys uh, with your understanding a little more. Thank you for staying until the end of this video. Math Genie.